Hello, here's a Houdini tutorial on how to make an aircraft cockpit and still be able to select different parts of it and adjust the overall shape. So to do this, um, I will start from a new scene. Um, but as you can see, it's very simple. So I'm going to start over and walk you through it. So we're going to start by creating geometry node. You could name it cockpit and in here we're going to start with a sphere. We're going to change the sphere to polygon mesh. Um, I'm going to use 12 rows, 12 columns, but it's up to you how many you use and using this rotational gizmo if you hold control you could snap rotate it to the side like that. After that we're just going to make an edit node like that and then here we're going to adjust the overall shape of the cockpit. And I'm just going to do this really quick for the sake of the tutorial. And this could be adjusted later, but you want to get it as close as you can. Now, uh, just with this method, it could break if uh, if you did drastic movements after. So let's say I'm happy with the overall shape. After this, we're going to add a subdivide node place it connected to here and we'll put three in the depth field just to have it very smooth. And from here we're gonna add a split node because we want to extract some polygons from this mesh uh, to do further modeling with it. So on split node I'm gonna click this arrow up here so I could manually select faces and and select the faces I want. And I'm only going to select half because we are going to mirror that later. So I selected these and holding Alt you could just drag the split out to make a copy and we're going to click that arrow again and select the next group of faces. This will be our middle and we're going to do the same. Alt copy, select and we're going to select the other half like so. Now we're going to create a merge node here and then we could connect these three into here. Or alternatively, if you hold Alt and drag this out, it will automatically create a merge node. After the merge node, we're going to add a ray node. And here we're going to connect to the first input the geometry we, we want for our windows and in the second input what we want it to ray to. And I'll explain this a bit more. This lattice that the ray creates is where it wants to snap your vertices to. We just have to change the method to minimum distance and you can see it moves the geometry to keep that same shape that's there. After we ray we could add another subdivide like so and we could subdivide our windows. So now, now with that it's split up, now we have to model each one of these individually. Like so, so we're going to add an edit node. We're going to do our modifications in there. We're going to add a mirror. So we could mirror the geometry on this axis. And as long as consolidate seam is on, it should weld the vertices that are within this tolerance. And then we just, actually before the edit node, let's get a few more edges. So we're going to add another subdivide node, like so, and we're going to place it in here. Just so we have more edges to work with for our modeling. You don't want too few here because then the, it might distort a little bit the final shape. And you don't want too many because then it might be harder to modify. So we're just going to do one on, for this example. And here we could... First, we want to bring these in a bit to give some space. And uh, you could just display the, the view flag to see what you're doing. And let's just adjust how we want to do this. Okay. 
And if you're starting to split the center, you could just go back to your mirror and increase the consolidate seam a little higher, which will snap these vertices together. And you don't have to be perfectly matching the curve because it will it will do its best to match it using the ray that we have below it. So don't go too far off or it will break. Um, but you do have some liberty here. And feel free to uh, use it. So we're going to now do the same for all the other ones. So we could take the subdivide and the smear and copy that and copy it again. And we're going to plug it into this one. Plug that into the merge and plug this one into here. And we have to cut these lines. So holding Y, you get the cut tool and you can just cut these down. And we could always preview our result. And excellent. So we're going to add a couple more edit nodes here. Do this one and let's pretend we want this one to come in a bit. And, and again, you don't have to worry about the curvature because this will fix it for you. Just like that. Let's just modify this a bit in. Like so. Uh, I somehow made this subdivide down here by accident. So I'm just going to delete that and pretend it wasn't there. There we go. So that's what I ended up with this. Uh, please feel free to make it more complicated than that. Um, so from here, now we, we want the edges of this um, to create a frame. So right here, we're just going to make a group because um, we want this group to to separate out the glass. So this is just for using later for textures. We're going to call this group name glass. That's just everything we have here. Then we're going to add another group node. Like so, and then this one we're going to switch to, to edges and we're going to uncheck base group, included edges and unshared edges. We just will select all the outside edges like this. And we will call it outside edges. And here we could use a poly extrude. Oops, sorry, I created a poly bell by accident. No, we're going to call make poly extrude. Like so, and on this poly extrude, we're going to pick the group that is our. Oh, I didn't name the group correctly. I'm going to take this name and name our group correctly, outside edges. So here in the poly extrude, we're going to select outside edges. And we're going to move the distance value to get a bit of a frame. We could uncheck output front because all we need want is the sides. And we're going to select this to create a group of what is being extruded. And the reason we need that is because we're going to add another poly extrude here, like so. And this one, we are going to select the group which was extrude side, which was created by this poly extrude, this name right here, extrude side. So now we could extrude that out um, to make to make our little frame for the glass. And we want it on the back side as well. So I'm going to, there's a little trick here. We're going to copy this holding alt and I'm going to go back to this poly extrude, copy this distance value 
copy parameter, then go to this poly extrude and paste relative reference. And at the beginning of this, I'm going to put a negative symbol. So it will extrude negatively, and this extrudes positively. But because the polygons are reversed here, we're going to add a reverse node, like so. And here, we're just going to merge these two together, like so. So we have that, and that. And um, that's, and now, now we could add a poly bevel just to get some of those edges to be chamfered. But uh, do check um, ex exclusions and ignore flat edges. And we're gonna change that to about four, 39, let's say, degrees. So it only uh, will bevel us the, the corners. And then back here, we could just add a color node. But you'd also do the materials just like this. And we could add a blue color, like so. And then we could change the group to be glass. So only the glass is blue. And that is the tutorial. As you can see, we could go back to this edit node. Like so we could adjust the shape. And then we can come back here and it w works. And just to make it easier to, to preview, I would add a null back here, and add an object merge. And on this object merge, you could just drag this null to, to the object one spot. And then back here, you could just add a transform node. So we could move that along here. So now if I hold control and click the purple spot here, the second one, second last one, it would show like a template of the geometry. Then I could go back to my edit node. And as I modify this, I could see how it's changing there. And that's just a good way to visualize. And that is how you make the cockpit. Thank you.